Good morning. Welcome to St. James here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. As we continue our journey here through the season of Epiphany, we've moved from the baptism of Christ. Well, the star leads the Magi to the, the, to the manger, to the place where Jesus is. And then the baptism where, well, God reveals well, the whole Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And today we continue with that element of faith becoming sight, word becoming sight with our gospel reading, with the calling of not only Nathaniel, but then the continuous call of the disciples. There's an element there that we sometimes miss, particularly as Lutherans, because, you know, we're people of the word, but we forget that the word leads to sight. And with all of these elements in there, um, it's a reminder that we too also are part of that evangelistic work. As we hear this message today, um, again, we build on this reality that, that God calls us to see Jesus, not just to, to have ideas, but to see Jesus. So as we grow um, and as we turn to our scripture readings, again, those of you who are on our email list, please pull up... Um, Pull up your, your bulletin inserts, and then we'll be using um, hymn 589, Speak, O Lord, Your Servant Listens, um, and uh, we'll be using that from our Lutheran service book um, for later today. But as we begin, let's turn to Psalm number 40 with our intro text. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and salvation, and let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your, of your people and grant us your peace throughout all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Well, already with Psalm 40 and our, our intro text, we have that, that sense of mission and evangelism, telling of God's faithfulness and of his gift of salvation. And this is that interesting thing. Even right from the Old Testament, salvation is talked about in terms of what God does. And here, as we run into this, not only throughout the church years we go and follow through the life of Christ, but even as we read through the scriptures, New Testament writers, they speak about the same thing, even as we hear today from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, with that call of Nathaniel from, well, verse 43 and onwards. Let me read that for you. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. 
This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, yes, there is that sense here as we listen to that of telling of God's faithfulness and not hiding that deliverance that God had promised. And yes, we have here the way in which Philip not only is called and Jesus says, follow me. And during that day and age, it's a little bit different from the way in which evangelical churches and Christians will say, well, we got to follow Jesus by doing all these sorts of things. No, he literally meant follow me, like follow Jesus. So when Jesus moved, Philip was supposed to follow him. And that's part of what discipleship is, is following Jesus following where he goes. And that's where the church calendar year is that pattern of discipleship where we can't follow Jesus physically in the same way that the disciples did. Well, let me qualify that. We can't follow him physically as Jesus walked from town to town. And so we follow him with our readings, with our ears. And then along the way, we follow him by coming and gathering around the altar where Jesus is physically present in well, the Holy Supper of our Lord to feed and nourish us with that same body and blood that, well, Philip and Andrew and Nathaniel got to see. See! And it's kind of interesting as we go along here, as Philip follows Jesus, and then he goes and finds Nathaniel and says, we found the one that, well, Moses and all the prophets, well, that's the word. And Nathaniel says, oh, really? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And he says, come and see. Come and see. Word becomes sight. This beautiful element and dimension with that, which ties into our faith as well, where through the word we see Jesus. We begin to perceive him. He comes to be present to us, even in places where he's hidden, so that we can see him there and gather around him, so that we can come and see, to taste and see that the Lord is good. All of those things along the way. But there's also this other element here, too, where as we do this, we're reminded not only to see through the word, to find Jesus through the word, so that when Jesus says, do this often, when Jesus says, you're baptized into my body, ah, oh, that's the word of the Holy Spirit spoken through Paul in 1 Corinthians. We're clothed in Christ and all of those sorts of things that we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit right there through baptism where we receive forgiveness and the Holy Spirit, all of these elements. We're also here and we're reminded along the way that as people who are made members of the body of Christ, we become witnesses, just like, well, Philip here. And as we discover along the way through the history of the church, Andrew and Nathaniel and all of the other first disciples and followers of Jesus, so that as we too are made part of that disciple band through the waters of baptism, when we follow Jesus throughout the readings of the scriptures, the way that we have it in our church calendar year, by coming out and seeing Jesus and receiving him again and again and again at the altar, all of these things along the way where it's like this is what it is in scripture that we become the people that carry him as well the way that paul also describes the temples of god and the temples of the holy spirit how through baptism where we are blessed with that gift and made members of the body of christ to the world so that through us that same call and invitation goes out to all the people around us. Come and see. You know, even as we listen to this text, and there is intended to be humor in that, and I hope that came through a little bit in how I read this, because sometimes when we read the Bible, we assume that it's all very, very serious. Jesus had a sense of humor here, as Nathaniel says, well, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip hears that, and Jesus, of course, knows. Nathaniel's a little bit of a skeptic. And so as Nathaniel comes towards Jesus, he says, Oh, look, Jesus says, Behold, an Israelite in whom there is no deceit, after he's just said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And then along the way, well, he says, How do you know me? He says, Well, before Philip... You know, I saw you under the fig tree. Well, oh, well, that must be a sure sign that he's the Messiah. He saw me under the fig tree. Okay, it could be anybody walking down the road and says, oh, there's the man under the fig tree. But, you know, as all of these things unfold, notice, Jesus doesn't turn him away. Instead, you know, he engages in the banter. 
We sometimes lose that sense of humor within the church. We need to be prepared to have a sense of humor as Christians because there is humor attached to that. With all of the ways in which the world and the devil and our own sinfulness can lead us to get all wrapped up and being in the doldrums and worried about this, that, and the other thing in the world around us, and we have our own skepticism, Jesus still comes to us to cut through that and say, but here I am as that new anchor that new anchor of peace, even as we prayed. A new anchor of peace, which is different from a worldly peace, but a peace that comes from heaven itself, so that Jesus comes to be the one who not only works out our salvation, your salvation, O oh Lord, your faithfulness, O oh Lord, even when we stumble, but he continues to give us that heartbeat of his own body and blood, his own love, his own grace, us today. Come and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Be a part of that bigger body of the church where we're gathered not because we're perfect, but because we know the one who forgives. And we gather to the area and the place where he comes to forgive. So that through the word, and yes, ultimately when Jesus returns, we will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on well, the Son of Man, Christ, even as we gather to sing holy, holy, holy together with angels and archangels. And these words have been part of the Christian liturgy since, since well, the dawn of the New Testament. You know, angels and archangels and all the company of heaven where Christ comes to us there as well with his body and blood in order to feed and nourish us with his grace and to be present on our lips, in our mouths, to give us life. Let's not hide that. That's actually this beautiful, beautiful, wonderful message, not just as a message, as ideas, but a reality of a gift which Christ himself has set into motion with his own words and teachings and his own institution of these things that we call sacraments today, baptism and Holy Communion, because it is there that Jesus says, this is where I am present for you. Come and take refuge. Let me clothe you in myself and feed you with that gift of eternal life. So that as we step into 2024, yes, with wars, yes, with raging politics, yes, with not quite sure what's going to happen, whether we're looking south of the border from Canada or internationally or taking a look at our own nation itself, where there's all kinds of things where people will get their shorts tied in a knot. And yes, I said that expression because of, well, this person and that person and that ideology and this political platform and all of those sorts of things where we try to define ourselves based on all of these worldly things rather than simply taking refuge to come and meet Jesus, to let Jesus and that gift that he gives us of his Holy Spirit unfold and unravel all of these you know, things that create so much tension and stress for us to come and see Christ our Lord. The Word made flesh, the one who dies for us, the one who gives us his flesh and his blood to eat and to drink so that we would have life within us, the one who washes us with the waters of baptism so that we're grafted into him as a branch into a vine so that our life gets derived from his that even today as following Jesus through the word with our ears with the other disciples people like you and me that we grow with the strength that he provides you want to talk about spiritual disciplines that's the biblical one meet Jesus in his word and in the sacraments that's the Lutheran one, Lutheran properly understood, where we grow by tuning our ears to hear and through our ears and God's word to learn to see 
the deeper reality of our lives rather than, well, the reality that we construct based on, you know, our worries, our fears, or this political view or that political view. That we let Jesus together with the Holy Spirit to become the new spectacles through the Word. That we get to see the world and see our lives and learn to smile and have that sense of humor with all of the brokenness out there, not in order to diminish the suffering of people, but to realize that in the midst of all of that suffering, God is still with us. And yes, to serve as we are able to serve, but to build on the victory which Christ himself wins as he dies on the cross for us and our salvation. The Lord bless you this year and continue to let you see that gospel through the word. Amen. Let's join in our prayers here today. Lord, Heavenly Fathers, we continue to wander into this new calendar year. We give thanks to you, not only for the fresh snow and the, the cooler temperatures that as they come across Canada, but also the way that through that snow you continue to provide the moisture for the earth so that the earth may be productive, producing its fruits so that the nations of the world may be fed. Bless us and help us not to grumble about these things that are simply an inconvenience to us along the way, but instead help us to recognize your hand of providence in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you would continue to be with those who, during the colder weather, when they aren't able to get out as much, that those that wrestle with not only mental health issues or other concerns, depression, or even grief at the death of a loved one, that they would be able to recognize, even in the midst of their tears, that gift of your baptism by which you've washed us and joined us to yourself, your son, not only through his death on the cross, but also in the resurrection. Help us to be not only Christmas people swaddled into Christ through baptism, but also epiphany people recognizing that we carry that same gift of life to the world and resurrection people as well, so that as we continue to grow within our faith, that we would be witnesses to all those around us in our hope that we place in Christ, the crucified, the risen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless us so that in the midst of all of the busyness of life as well, that rather than simply being caught up chasing all of these different social and worldly kinds of priorities, that your call to the gospel by your word and that gift of your Holy Spirit would become first and foremost the priority of our lives, both for ourselves and for our children, so that through our own action and coming out to be part of your church, that we would have that courage to stand within that new gift, cemented to that new life, but then also be witnesses to our children who so desperately need to he see that within our lives and hear that same word, because without it, there's so many other priorities that they would get caught up in. Help us to be those witnesses, even in the same way that Philip was to Nathaniel, to all those in our lives, beginning with those at home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And again, yes, we continue our prayers for peace throughout the world so that all of these skirmishes and the conflicts, not only the ones picked up by the media, but in other places as well, whether it's throughout, the, well, Pakistan, Afghanistan, whether it's in the Ukraine or whether in, in Israel, in the Middle East, whether it's across Africa, in countries where there's continuous and ongoing conflict between different groups, different tribes, and different peoples, that we would not only hear your word, but also that you would allow your peace to settle into the hearts of all those so that we would be able to not only embrace one another in, within the family of the faith, but then also that we would learn to embrace one another as people for whom Christ died. Help us to live that peace and to be those peacemakers in every way possible. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with our own country here so that as we go into this new year, whatever the, whatever the year might hold, that we would learn to recognize not only that you continue to care for us and hold 
the, the events of the world and the events of our country in your hands, even when we can't figure out what, what it is that you're doing there. So that drawing our attention to you, turning our eyes and attention to our Savior, that we would learn to rest in him and to trust that you hold all of our days in your care. All of these things we bring before you, though, trusting in your mercy, all through Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Well, as we turn, like I said, let's turn to hymn 589 um, in our Lutheran service book. Speak, O Lord, your servant listens. Um, a beautiful, beautiful um, text on, on praying that the Lord would help us to dig into that word and to chew on his word so that through the word we would grow in our faith. <clears throat> Speak, O Lord, your servant listens. Let your word to me come near. Newborn life and spirit give me. Let each promise still my fear. Death's dread power, its inward strife, wars against your word of life. Fill me, Lord, with love's strong fervor, that I cling to you forever. Oh, what blessing to be near you and to listen to your voice. Let me ever love and hear you. Let your word be now my choice. Many hardened sinners, Lord, flee in terror at your word. But to all who feel sin's burden, you give words of peace and pardon. Lord, your words are waters living when my thirsting spirit pleads. Lord, your words are bread life-giving. On your words my spirit feeds. Lord, your words will be my light. Through death's cold and dreary night, yes, they are my sword prevailing and my cup of joy unfailing. As I pray, dear Jesus, hear me. Let your words in me take root. May your spirit e'er be near me, that I bear abundant fruit. May I daily sing your praise, from my heart glad anthems raise. Till my highest praise is given in the endless joy of heaven. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll see you again next week. <clears throat>